So you made an armored costume. You got a 3D printer. You printed this whole thing out. You printed it as fast as you could because you wanted to see it done. You sacrifice quality for quickness. How do you take a printed part, prep it for paint, and not spend your entire life sanding? I got a couple of things to show you today, a couple different methods. Let's go, I'll show you. printer you can make all kinds of different things with it you can make armor like this an entire costume out of it you can make small stuff you can make little worthless trinkets you can make replicas like this fertility idol from Raiders of the Lost Ark you can do all kinds of different stuff you can make home accessories for your spouse or significant other or for yourself for that matter. But the thing of it is, is 3D printing is a couple things. It is not fast. There's a direct relationship between quality of your print, of your output from your machine, to time. The bigger the quality, the higher the quality, the higher the resolution in which you print something, the more time that it takes. That's one issue. The other issue is that when you're related to that, when you're making something that's as large as the shore trooper here is, this is an entire costume or the majority of the armored portion or the upper portion of the costume, this takes a hell of a lot of time. Now, I could print this so that the output at a very, very high resolution when it comes out of the machine looks fantastic and amazing. However, I would like to complete a project like this sometime before I die. So you have to do that trade-off between time to print and the resolution. So once you get to this point where you've printed something and it's done, you're done with this portion of it on your machine, how do you take it from something that is imperfect where by nature when you use an FDM printer which is one that does layers at a time you have you know if you were to cut across and into the ground and you see layers of soil layers of sediment in the ground 3d printing works exactly the same way so when we look at something like this fertility idol here which was printed at a fairly good resolution I think about 0.15 was the layer height on there that I did it at 0.15 millimeters that when you look at it it looks pretty good but you do not have a perfect surface on it you have steps so when you print something a little bit slower like with the shore trooper you need to go back in and finish it you need to prep it for painting prepping for painting in any kind of project whether it's a woodworking project or it's an auto project, you're doing body work on a vehicle, you're doing 3D prints, you're, anything is one of the parts that I like least. It really is. I like painting. I like doing the finishing steps, but getting from the raw part to the finished part, the painted part, is the part that sucks. It really does. So through time, I found a couple different ways in making projects like this. And I've had my printer now for, it's getting close to two years, and I've made a lot of different things. I don't make a lot of little junky, throwaway, you know, garbage with mine. Um, a lot of people are happy doing that with theirs, and they make all kinds of little stuff that they find models of online. And awesome. Whatever. Cool. Whatever you're going to do. I got mine to do things like this. I can make an entire costume with my printer for the price at $15 a roll for about four rolls I think I've gone through a filament to, to make this armor. 15 bucks, four rolls, $60 plus a lot of time but these kits for these shore troopers if you go out and source one and, and, and buy a kit, a vacuum form kit or a fiberglass kit can cost you $1,000 plus. These entire costumes finished 
when people purchase the armor kits and they purchase all the parts individually and they buy the $750 helmet from licensed sources and all those things, they could spend $2,500, $3,000. This whole costume, when it's all said and done, including the boots, the soft parts, everything is going to cost probably about 300 bucks. And the way that I was able to do that is with my printer. My printer was able to make everything for a fraction of the cost. Now we got to take what we've made with the printer and make it into something that's ready for the printer. All right, so we've gotten our finished parts. We're ready to go ahead and take care of them so that we can actually paint them and do the fun parts and get this thing finished. So there's a couple different ways that you can do this. Um, 3D printing by itself, FDM printing, depending on the material that you use. I print mostly in PLA just because it is easier to print with, especially on parts where I'm printing armored parts that are very thin walled. ABS can be tricky. I have an enclosure for my printer. It, it can be tricky. ABS is fantastic to finish. If you can print with ABS and you've got your settings dialed in and you've got a machine that does well with ABS, fantastic print with it. It is stronger. It is much easier to finish definitely than PLA is. But I like PLA because it is easier to print with. I start a print. I walk away. I go to bed. I go to work. I come home 12 hours later. When that part is done, it's done. I don't have a pile of garbage in my printer. I don't have failed prints. I just like the reliability of it. So with PLA, there's a couple different ways that you can do it. Um, the simplest way and the way that the majority of people will do is they will sand with different grades of sandpaper, starting out with something very rough, and work that, work that plastic down and smooth it out. And then they'll hit it with filler primer. Filler primer, gap filling primer, Hit it with that, sand it again some more, hit it with the primer again, repeat, repeat, repeat until you get a surface that is smooth. It works. It does. It absolutely does. Um, however, given the fact that these are FDM printed and PLA and FDM prints to begin with aren't exactly the strongest things going when it comes to printed parts, um, there's a couple different ways to do it. Now the strongest way to do it, and the way that I've done it before, and that one of the ways I'm going to show you to do is using fiberglass resin. Fiberglass resin you can use, we can put over the top of our printed parts. It will lay into those valleys um, in your printed surface. It will also give you additional strength to your material, to your part. So I'm going to put that on the back side. I'm also going to put it on the outside on some pieces, okay? Um, when this is done, it can be sanded, it can be machined, it can be drilled, it can be lots of different things, so it is very tough stuff. However, the bad part about fiberglass resin, of course, is working with it. Fiberglass resin is disgusting. It stinks. It is a terrible material for you to be working with because it is very nasty. You cannot use it inside. So when we go and do this, and I show you how to do this in a little bit, we will be outside. We're getting out of the shop, we're going outside because this stuff is downright nasty. So fiberglass resin is one way to do it. Another way to do it with this acetone works fantastic for ABS printed parts. You can put acetone right over the top of an ABS printed part, wipe it down on there, it will start to eat the plastic away a little bit and actually smooth it out for you. Fantastic. It does not work with PLA though. However, using something that I used during um, the early part of my, my BB-8 build, using some ABS parts for that, you can take, a, take acetone, you can take ABS plastic, and combine the two together. So you take your box or your bucket or your garbage can full of ABS parts that didn't quite print right or failed or you're not happy with, and combine it with acetone in something like a jar or in a plastic the acetone does not eat. 
because there are a few that it does not eat. Um, and you combine the two together, you put the plastic parts, the ABS parts only, this only work with ABS, in the acetone, let it dissolve, and then what you end up with eventually is you end up with a paste or something with ABS particles suspended in it. So when we take this acetone, we can then spread it on the surface of a PLA printed part with the ABS dissolved in it, put it on the surface of the PLA, which the acetone is not going to hurt the PLA, and the acetone is going to evaporate, and then you're left behind with ABS. The ABS particles will help you to fill your voids in the material. They will smooth it out for you, and then you're left with something that is very easily sandable. ABS, you can sand all day. It is simple as can be to sand. PLA does not like to be sanded. It is a much slower process. So, you have a couple different methods to do there. You've got the sanding and filler primer. You've got the fiberglass. You have got the ABS slurry method that I'm going to show you too. And we're going to do a couple different versions and different types of things to, to finish some of these parts because some areas it makes sense to do one way, some it makes sense to do another. I'm going to need strength in a lot of these parts, these chest armor parts, these arm portions, the shoulder bells, especially in the, the forearms and the bicep parts of the armor. I'm going to need more strength, so I'm going to do a lot more with fiberglassing. However, the fiberglassing on those parts is primarily going to be on the inside of things. There will probably be a skim coat of that over the outside just to give a little bit more strength and keep those layers together when we start having flexing forces um, on these parts. But we're going to do a combination of things. So, a couple of things before we go outside that you're going to need to do this. Um, depending on the method you're going to do, you're going to need filler primer. The Rust-Oleum filler primer is a high build formulation. There is lots of other ones of these available on Amazon, available to hardware stores. Um, home centers, they're all over the place. Art supply stores, filler primers are everywhere. Fiberglass resin. Okay, you can pick this up. Places like Walmart, your hardware stores, auto parts stores. It's used primarily in auto repairs, body work, boat repairs, that kind of thing. That can be picked up there. Acetone. Acetone's available anywhere, too. Anywhere you can buy paint materials, they're going to have acetone. Hardware stores, paint stores, um, home improvement centers, auto parts stores, all going to be there. A couple of other things that you're going to need along with that, too. When we're working with any of these methods, you're going to need brushes. And you're going to need brushes that you do not give a crap about. Two things you need to do. If you're using acetone, you cannot use cheap plastic bristle brushes. The acetone will eat it away and you'll be left with a melted together clump of junk on the end of your brush. So chip brushes work fantastic. They are cheap as can be. I picked up a box of 12 3 inch ones that cost about five dollars. Another thing that you're going to need regardless of whatever method you do, you're going to need gloves. And the gloves are going to help you keep that nasty fiberglass resin off your skin. You do not want it on your skin. It is hazardous to you in that way. It also is a complete and utter pain to get off of your skin, and it does not come off of clothes. It will ruin your clothes as well. So gloves, the chip brushes, um, something to mix everything into. Obviously, this is my ABS slurry jar here. Um, another jar or bucket or something to mix up the uh, fiberglass resin. You're going to need that too. Uh, one thing that is extremely important, and I cannot emphasize this enough, again, do not use acetone inside. Do not use the fiberglass resin inside. You need to have a ton of ventilation, even if you are wearing a respirator. And when you are doing this stuff, wear a respirator. There may be portions in the video where I'm talking about something that I don't have my respirator on, but I hope that in the rest of it, when I have other sections that we're seeing, that I have this on. Because you need to wear this when you're working with this, especially with the fiberglass resin. When you're sanding it later on, you do not want that dust in your lungs. 
Okay, so safety first on that stuff. Do not forget it. Do not pass by those steps. All right, other than that, I think we've got everything we need. We kind of have an idea of what we're going to do. We're going to work on a couple of these pieces of the armor to get them prepped and ready so you can see how that works. We're going to go outside. We're going to do that. We've got a beautiful day outside. It's about 80 degrees outside, nice and sunny. Go get set up outside. We'll take care of that. See you in a bit. All right, so made it outside. Made it outside. Henry's out with me today. We're working out here because this stuff, again, is just entirely too nasty. So what we're going to do first, we're going to do the fiberglass resin. And we're going to do that on our printed parts. And hopefully with the two cameras, it might help a little bit more to see some stuff close up. So if we look at this bicep armor here, you can see the layers in it. You can see the unevenness in it. And quite honestly, this just needs to be stronger because it is very, very thin walled. So we're going to go ahead and get the fiberglass, the resin on the outside of that. Also on the forearm armor here as well, which I've done a lot of sanding and quite a bit of filler primer on. But the way it was printed, it was just not printed great. And it was kind of printed before. I really had the Z-axis on the printer really locked down and kind of vibration free, so we're going to do that. And then we're also going to coat uh, one of the shoulder bells too. So as we go through this, obviously we're going to have things, it is a Saturday afternoon, we're going to have traffic, we're going to have people cutting the grass, we're going to have the neighbors walking by, the dogs barking, all that good stuff. So, and Henry playing of course too. So, alright, so for directions, follow directions on your resin as far as how you're supposed to mix it, um, ratios and all that stuff. Working time on the fiberglass resin is going to only be a few minutes. So you're going to have eight to ten minutes at best with this stuff. It is going to make a mess. It is going to be nasty again. If you're going to be doing this when you're not talking the entire time, wear the respirator. Keep that on. This is nasty, nasty stuff. The show on this is about six tablespoons of the resin to a quarter teaspoon of the catalyst. So as soon as this gets poured in, it's go time with this. There's no messing around. So you got to have everything ready. You all set to mix everything up. And again, of course, this stuff is horrendously messy. If you're wearing clothes and you get anything on it, they are done for. So first step, of course, mix it up good. If you don't mix it up, you're going to have a giant disastrous mess. And I was hoping by doing the two camera thing too that I would also have some better audio for the video because we're outside and the mic on the, the primary camera there is going to pick up all the background noise really well. So at some point Henry stops playing with his horn, I might be in a little bit better shape. So, alright, we've got that mixed up. Alright, so we got that mixed up. well enough. If it's not well enough, we're going to have a big mess on our hands. Just mix that up. Get it ready to go. Got your brushes ready to go. The chip brushes you got to be careful with too Dad, before you go I, to use one. Can I use a brush? You can use a brush in a little bit, Henry. Um, before you use the chip brushes, make sure you get all the bristles off the loose ones by grabbing it. And then get one of those off of there. That's for you to hold on to, dude, okay? Um, get the loose bri bristles off of there. And then hopefully this should be the easier of the pieces to do. We're going to start with the shoulder bell and do that first. <laughs> at this point all we're going to be doing is getting resin onto the brush and brushing it onto 
what you're going to want to do, because the intention of this is not just to add strength, but to, more so than that, is to help to smooth out some of these print lines on here. So when you're putting it on, actually, you're going to want to make sure that you go across the the printed, the grain on there, the layers on there, so that you get as much of that resin in between the layers as you possibly can. So yeah, this is this is a very very messy process, and probably what we're going to do is speed up through this part of things because quite honestly, it's not very exciting to watch somebody brush stuff on and, and talk about the way that they're brushing things on. It's pretty simple. It's pretty. Si Thanks, dude. You can hang on to it for me for right now. Okay. Unfortunately, right now the accelerator is already kicked on here. So this stuff is setting up already on me. So we're pretty much done with the workable time of that. All right, so we got our fiberglass resin on here. We let it dry for a little bit of time. We went and got some lunch. The assistant was hungry, so we went and, went and did that, got some lunch. And now we're back to continue on with this. So in the interest of not having 4,000 cameras and more editing time and all of that that goes along with it, that is what the surface looks like right after the, the fiberglass resin on there. So much smoother, looks much better. Now what we're going to do is we're going to sand it up quick, finish smoothing things out. Now I'm going to use an orbital sander, which you can use on printed parts. You cannot hang out in the same spot for forever. If you stay in the same place for too long, you're going to heat up your plastic too much and it's going to melt, it's going to warp, it's going to be bad all the way around. Henry, are you going to come help me? Come on, stop fixing your glove, come on over here and help me. So you can use the orbital sander, you can do it, you just can't do it forever. Alright Henry, so we're going to do some sanding now, okay? Okay. All right, so what we've got is something that is still not perfect. The seam lines here are probably going to look pretty bad after we throw some primer on here real quick. No, you don't, Henry. Not right now. So after we go ahead and put the primer on here real quick, we're going to see that this line, the seam line where these two parts were glued together is far from perfect. But the amount of terrible spots that are on here are going to be pretty small. So let's throw some primer on there real quick and see what it looks like.
It's a quick coat of filler on there. And for the most part, our horizontal lines are gone with the exception of a couple parts where we just didn't get a whole lot of the, the resin into, but that's something we could do with filler real quick. We can touch up this line where the two parts meet up. And we'll have something that looks, that's ready to paint and is gonna look fantastic when it's done being painted. So not bad for a few minutes. A little resin on there, a little dry time, a little sanding for a couple minutes. There was no stopping the video and sanding for half an hour in between there. That was all reality of what was sanded. So it works. The, the way with the ABS slurry works exactly the same way as it does with the polyester resin. You brush it on, you let it dry, um, and then when it's dry, it you know, fills in fills in your valleys, fills in the voids, and then you sand it off. And it sands off very, very easily. Again, both of these, do them outside. This stuff, acetone is extremely flammable. Please don't be doing that in your house, in the basement, near your furnace, near your water heater, while you're smoking, all those kinds of things. Not a good idea, but the rest of it, it works the same. It's all the same process either way you go. That's one quick coat of filler primer on there, another one, and a couple spots filled in real quick with just, you know, blazing putty and that thing's ready to paint. So, if you don't want to spend all your time sanding, painting, priming, filling over and over again 10,000 times with these PLA painted parts, printed parts, that is a fantastic way to do it. So hopefully that helped you. I uh, look forward to some more hopefully helpful videos that are fun for you and kind of help you along the process. So that's it. See you next time. Thanks.